Okay. We've got a pendulum and a movement and some weights and some chains. And this one is coming from Louisville, Kentucky. So we'll take a look at weights later. This the chains we'll check out later. Pendulum we'll check out later. Alright. Looking at the movement. Alright. Looking at the second wheel. Pivot right here. Can you see that moving around? So that's that's definitely going to need rebushed. Escape gear. After we clean it and clean pivots, we'll check it again. It's maybe a tiny bit loose, but not like that second wheel. Yeah, definitely. Strike side, second wheel, flocking, or flopping around like a rat tail marine barrel. There. Watch this one right here. See that moving around? That's going to need rebushed. Okay, rebushed. Third wheel may be the same thing. So it looks like, uh, I see three on the back. Center wheel looks okay. Chain wheel itself okay. Come to the front, and that's all under. Yeah, the second wheel on the run side. Second wheel's bad on both sides. Second wheel is bad on that side too as well. Can't tell about anything further than that. But well. Okay. Now let's see. I'm not going to be able to take the dancing platform off because that's riveted on. For the cuckoo side, and a tray for the run side. This bracket can't come off either because it's it's on there as well. Screwdriver here and my little pliers. And I want to take. I'm going to start by taking the. Pendulum leader off. You know what? We could might as well just unscrew this to begin with because we know we're going to need it off when we start bushing. So we'll take the post off of here and threading it. Okay, wonder how it's going to interfere. It's the music box. Uh, let's see how those were all put together. Oh damn. It's got those bad, those nasty old, oh I hate those. Hope I can get these off a little easier. Let's just take this one off. I'll do that by loosening these two. Two nuts. Okay. 
And we should be able to just lift that off. Maybe. Yep, there we go. Okay. All right. Okay. Put those back on. Don't worry, I take the plates apart. Just leave them so I don't lose them. There's a lot of this stuff that's uh, riveted. See, I like the, the bird. Okay. Now this thing, see how it's held on. Okay. Alright, we're gonna See how that, that's interesting. What runs that? Is there another? Okay, got chain wheel here. And then we've got these two gears that run the dancing platform. And then this gear over here, obviously, probably goes to the music box. And, uh, so to get this out of here, maybe we'll just leave that intact for right now. Because that's through the posts, which stay on the plate. We'll just leave that for right now. And we should be able to get these out. Let's take this. The spring is just in a hole here in the plate. And then we should be able to just rotate this backwards. Until we line up the pin, the hammer comes off, and take the note how the short cuckoo lift is on top, followed by the long cuckoo lift, and that rotates around. Do I slide those out of that out? And you rotate that one around, slide that one out, and we can't take that off. We'll leave that on. We need to take off the... Alright, here's the thing to look at here now. Hang on a second. It should go that way when it runs. So let's run this until it locks. And that should be a function of the... Oh, something's... Something's not right here. Okay. There we go. Rack is operating. Okay, now that should go into lock. Okay, that's in lock right now. Let's see. Once it's in lock, what you want to do is note approximate position of this star wheel so you can put it back on reasonably close. Okay, loosen that and the star wheel comes off. Okay, we got those off the back. Whew. Well, let's see how these are horrible things. Let's see if they come off at all. i to find a way to spread those off. That's an almost. Then, you get in there and spread those two. Put the screwdriver in there. Hmm. Try a little smaller one. Stinker. I wonder what tool they use for getting those things off. Those are those compression type. I have no idea. Let me see if I can get this in here. There 
if I grab a hole. There has got to be a special tool for that because that doesn't push off like an E-clip. I have no idea. Two of those to get off of there. I'm probably going to have some somewhere else too. No, let's see a reason to write. We've got our E-clips here. Those are those G-type. I haven't the foggiest notion. What they'd use? There's got to be something you'd put in there to spread those things apart. God, I hate those things. And that's just simply used so they don't have to have an extra step in the manufacturing process of putting a groove in the shaft. That ain't it either. They are just not going to come off. It is a true bear of a clip. They are horrid. I understand why the manufacturer wanted to put them on. It saves a step in manufacturing the movement. They don't have to put a groove in the shaft to put a regular E-clip on. Man, if you're going to do that to the repairman, I can understand why people might not be real happy with you. There, that one's coming finally. That's terrible. That's garbage. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do what I did on another movement. I'm not going to put those type of things back on. I'm going to cut on my lathe two little press fret brass buttons to put on there that will uh, hold those tight but can be easily taken off. There's really not a lot of pressure put on that. And these are so tight up against the... I'm surprised it doesn't interfere with the movement of the, of the lever. That they have those so, so tight. I'm going to end up pinching my fingers here in a minute. I'll have to edit the video. I'll say something I ought not be saying. And all this is caused by some stupid industrial engineer. Those m morons are always looking for ways to cut production costs. And the heck with repair costs are the people that have to deal with them. Industrial engineers have to be just about the Some of the most stupid people that ever walked the face of the earth. Look for a cheap way out. Try, uh, God, that'll get me a raise. It'll get me a way to cut production costs. Uh, yeah, the boss will like that. I'll have get a nice raise for that one. And then what ends up happening is they cause so many dissatisfied customers. They have to go back to the old ways anyway. Man, I can't get this thing off. <clears throat> and I don't know what the tool would be to do it. <laughs> and I never had to deal with these. Uh, one, I did a few weeks ago. 
had the same ones on it. It's these older regulars. I'm just going to stop this till I get done. That is just awful. I wanted to ensure that people weren't going to repair them. I'm going to buy new. Just awful. Finally, trash, trash. Okay, let's get these front pieces off. Nice little E clip that just flew. But I've got a ton of those. Found it anyway. Okay, so. Okay, yeah, we gotta turn the our hand. I could get another pair of hands out. Anyway, you gotta turn this far enough that the snail gets out of the way of that E clip down there that's holding that washer on the okay, there's that E clip. Okay, now we can take the washer off. And we should be able to get the rack off and the snail, the intermediate gear. Okay, now these two are the ones that are, here's a spring that's holding this. Okay, and this is held by one of those G-clips. And this is held by the other, now let's take that. Let's take that spring off of there. Now we're going to try. It's caught. Rotate it back. Get it pinless. Crooked. That's laying off. I wish I'd be able to get that spring off. Okay, spring is off. Now oh, this will come oh nuts. Now why did you manufacture something like that? Look at this. This is this bird perch is riveted on just a pinch. I hate undoing these. Because that uh, they'll just break if you try undoing them. But this lever <laughs> is caught behind the bird perch. How on earth are you supposed to get that out? Well, I don't know. That's going to be fun. it. 
Talk about a manufacturing nightmare. God, I love industrial engineers. They are such morons. Okay. I'm just going to have to leave that in there until we get this apart. See if I can find another way to get that out of there. That's insane. That's just insane. Okay, let's get the... We get the levers off the front. That's the only ones that are holding the plates together, so... We gotta get these plates apart is what we gotta do. That's the most important thing. Get the plates apart so we can do a, any bushing we need to do. Okay, so... This is our strike side over here. Got the nuts off. Okay, should be able to pull that off now. Hmm. Okay. Let's look at our... Let's look at this. Does not seem the pallets on the anchor are not worn especially badly. Here's your movement. Here's the uh, plate. It's actually the back plate. And let's read everything on it. Regula 25, made in West Germany, which means it was made after 1949. And uh, E. Schmeckenbecker. Okay, we got to clean that up. And so, we have an escape wheel. Which appears to be in decent shape. And we have chain wheel. And this we got to check out now. Okay. Uh, click is working uh, properly in that one. Nothing seems to be bent. Doesn't seem nothing seems to be loose. Okay. Okay. There's our second wheel. And I got to change glasses again. Okay, I don't see anything that's badly worn on the pivots. They look fine, nice and smooth. A little bit of rust in the uh, in the pinion. So anyway, there's the and then there's this little puppy that holds the okay holds the bird open. And we've got a flywheel, and we've got the um, third wheel, second wheel, chain wheel for the strike side. Let's see if this one works. Yeah, that works. Corrosion and rust in there. It doesn't look too bad. Okay. This is the mecha part of the mechanism that holds the bird open. And we can't. Uh, we can take these out, but I think I'm going to leave them in for right now because I just don't want to mess with it. There you can You can see what mechanism is here's where the chain wheel is and you can see these two gears that turn this gear up here and that's what makes the dancing platform work
Okay, so we got the plates cleaned and the ultrasonic along with the time gears. Hear the ultrasonic running in the background and cleaning the other stuff now. So I'm going to put this back together with three gears and check out the pivots. So we got the, this big gear in the back here is what runs the time. So we're going to put that in first. Those two got a mesh. Then this gear goes in here. And then the uh, escape gear goes in here. Now put the plate back on. Check that out. There's our run side. The way it would run this way. Oh yeah, now you can see clearly, watch this pivot right here, see it flopping? That's got to be replaced. And I think same on the other side. Yeah, it's, it's flopping pretty good too. See that thing moving? Right here? Yeah, that's pretty worn. So we'll redo those. Okay, I've marked on here the ones that I'm going to replace. And, uh, we can see those pretty clearly. We know that the chain pulls this way. So when I wiggle this and I pull where the chain is, I can see the side of the hole that gets the wear. The opposite side is the, the hole is the part of the hole that is unworn. And I mark that side with a little tiny black mark so that I know where to even out the wear before I put a bushing in it. So I've got two on this side I'm going to do. And I've got, uh, so it's uh, on the front side, on the back side it's going to be the first wheel and the second wheel that need a bushing. And on the back side it's going to be the second wheel. The second wheel is always the one that wears. And uh, second wheel and the escape wheel. 
I'm going to put two bushings there. So the run side here is going to get four bushings. So the way we go about that then is just... And then what I've done too is I do make a black mark, just a dot on the side of the wheel with each wheel that faces the front so I know which plate goes with which pivot. I do that. I'm going to take those black marks off with a little acetone later on. So we take this apart. Now yeah, we'll start with the front plate, or the back plate I mean. So we're going to be bushing this hole, and bushing this hole. So that's the this gear and the second wheel. And so I want to take a look and see what the sizes are there. So I need to get my caliper and uh, let's get a piece of paper. And we should have a pencil somewhere. Now this particular bushing is going to be 1.18 1 so, the, so the chain wheel 1.18 millimeters and the second wheel which we're going to bush is going to be right on exactly one millimeter second wheel one millimeter. Alrighty. So now what we gotta do is uh, we look for bushings in here that have a well, these are point nine. That's close. See if I got any one. Hey, here we go. These bushings right here have a bore of exactly one millimeter. So if we use one each for both the chain wheel and the second wheel. Chain wheel require, when you put them in the hole, they tend to close up the hole just a bit. So it require just a tiny bit of broaching. And then we'll broach out the uh, a one millimeter to 1.8 for the, 1.18 for the second wheel. So we're going to be using two of these, these bushings. And they have a diameter, the outside diameter of the bushings is three millimeters so we're gonna bore these two holes out to 2.97 millimeters with our reamer and we'll press those in and then we'll broach them to the size and that will give us nice new clean uh, clean bearings and before we do that we need to get a file and what I have is I have a Swiss pattern file. Take my glasses off here. And what I'm going to do is I need to grind away the side of the pivot hole that is not worn. The pressure's been on this side of this hole, for example, and it's unworn on this side. But if I went ahead and I used the reamer in it, because this hole is now oval, the reamer is going to tend to want to draw down this way. And when it cuts the hole, it's going to be very slightly off-center. But if I file out where it's unworn before I ream it, then it's not going to tend to pull to one side or the other. and going to tend to be more into the uh, true center. Same with both of these holes, so I've got to file them out here first. And I'll double check, see how much it's worn by looking at the oil sinks. And this isn't going to take a whole lot. We just take this file and we just file the unworn side. 
just enough that the uh, reamer will go in the dead center. Okay, that looks good. Okay. So this is a reamer. It says, I don't know if you can see that or not. It says 2.97 millimeters. That's three hundredths of a millimeter smaller than the bushings. I'm going to drill those out. chamfering tool and then we'll take take the burr off of those holes and slightly chamfer them so that when I go to put the bushings in we have a little bit easier start going into the hole. Alright so those are now ready and we need a, a, a staking block Bushings. Okay. And a hammer. And we're going to take where's my forceps. One bushing, we're gonna put it here. flush. Okay, they're a little longer, so I need to put it over a hole. I want those to be absolutely, that still doesn't feel flush. Now it does, that's good. Okay. Another one here. Let's get flush. And I'll turn this off long enough to get uh, to find the uh, get out the uh, brooches to broach the holes. So now I found this a smoothing brooch. This is a cutting brooch that will fit these holes. And I'll go in there. Okay. Now as you recall, these were one millimeter bore. These were one millimeter. And so if I go to put this uh, into the bushing, it doesn't quite fit. So I need to broach that out. I get my cutting brooch and I put it into my you know, I'm gonna loosen it up into my pin vise. Okay. And that cutting brooch goes in that hole. And we start cutting. And we start fitting. Did I misread that? That sure looks bigger than a millimeter. That's right, okay, this was the one that was 1.8, 1 1.18, so that's got to get cut just a little bigger. Okay, so we, this cutting brooch just cuts out small amounts of metal at a time and we keep cutting 
I cut from both sides. You just keep cutting until it's just about there. I can a little tight, so getting close. Okay, that fits in a hole. Now I go like this, should have four to five degrees of movement, it looks good. And then what I want to do, I'll teach my little chamfering tool, just take the burr off of that, take my chamfering tool on the outside, and actually we'll probably cut these back to so that they're more flush. These bushings are a little, these plates are very thin. These bushings are a little bit thicker than the plate. So what I really want to do, if I want to make this look really good, is cut these down a little bit. And I think I'll do that now. And the way to do that is to that raised bushing. Take it down flush to the to the plate. Let me just do that on this one. Too. Okay, that's close. off the rough edges with a real fine file. Like so. And I can look under here. Anyway, this goes in here, and now we'll rough broach this one. And this one, remember, was about a millimeter, so it's going to be very close to fitting anyway. So we'll go in here and we'll do some very, very, very little broaching. side because these things are tapered.
just a little sticky. And there it is. And that fits. And we take our chamfer and knock the edge off. And now what we got to do is we got to take the smoothing brooch, put it in here. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to work harden and and also smooth the inside of that uh, those holes. And these always require a little drop of oil on them. No more oil on my mint, but so we'll take this smoothing brooch, put it in here. Ooh. I really need one just a little bit bigger than that. that. Go to the other side. Rotate it a little bit. Smooth the inside of that thing. And I'll go to this one. Go to the other side. Okay, that's it. Now what I'm going to do is I'll wait for that one. I'm going to put this back in here. And I'm going to put this one back in here. And we will put the plate back on. back in. What we do is we turn them to see if they're going to work okay. Then we check them for end shake. Okay, so far so good. Good end shake. Everything meshes. Runs real good. And then if we look at those two, there are. There's no more flopping back and forth. Should see it tiny, tiny, tiny bit of movement so that there's some play in it. That runs real good. And so that side is rebushed. We'll polish those off. So they're nice and smooth. Now we've got to go to the other side and we've got to do the second wheel and the escape wheel. Okay, the bushings are done on the other side now. And Check them out here. Perfect. Runs good. And that should run better. Okay. Plates are a little cleaner. Everything's cleaner. Now we got to take these gears out, put the strike side in, and see what we need to do there. Okay, I put the strike side gears back in now, so I can check out those. And uh, look through the magnifier. A uh, second wheel definitely needs where the gathering pallet goes. Watch this one right here. This one. You see it. Uh, see it moving back and forth pretty good. So that one definitely needs to be bushed. And uh, let's see, winds that way, so this way. Okay, so the unworn side is over. 
over here. I know where to file. One right here that's worn. Uh, that looks pretty good. Let's see this side now. Oh, yeah, main wheel here needs done. You can see it moving quite a bit. This one right here. It's flopping around. And that one, the unwound side will be underneath. Or above, I mean. There. Let's see what the others look like. Second wheel, how do you look? Yeah, second wheel's pretty worn. It's not bad. Eh, I don't know. I don't like it. I'm worn side over here. So I put three bushings on this side and one bushing on this side. So we've got four bushings to do on the strike side. And we did. What did we do on the other side? We did. that side so we'll do four on that side there'll be a total of eight bushings we're gonna do on this movement so we go through the same process there I don't know if I need to show that or not but we'll go ahead and do those okay we had a little problem with this bushing right here that's the warning wheel bushing it was you look very closely. This uh, it's extremely close to the edge of the plate here. So I couldn't put a normal the bushing that normally I would put in there would have been the one with a one millimeter bore. But that has a It has a three millimeter outside diameter, and that would have taken it clear outside the edge of the plate, torn a hole in it. So what I did was I found one that had a two millimeter outside diameter, and I put it in. But the bore on that is only half a millimeter, and the uh, a warning wheel is a full millimeter so I really had a lot of a lot of um, broaching I had to do to broach that out to make that uh, that fit but it uh, it worked out we maintained the integrity of the edge of the the hole so got one more bushing to do here and then on the other side one bushing to do here and we're done with all the bushing. Okay, we're going to run into the same kind of problem here. This is uh, we need to put a bushing in for this wheel. And when I uh, measure this, this is uh, 1.92 millimeters. So. <clears throat> That's awful close to this. Normally I would probably be looking at using the 2 millimeter bore. And that, I guess that's, yeah, that's just a very tight fit. That would be absolutely perfect if I could use this one. But if I use that bushing, 
the problem with it is it's got a four and a half millimeter outside diameter and if I put that in there I'm right right at the edge of the plate I just don't want to jeopardize that because that's where the most weight is going to be so we're not going to use one that fits perfect we're going to go with one that is only 1.75 millimeter bore because its outside diameter is a full millimeter less than the bushing I would normally use and that's three and a half millimeters so I'm going to put this one in and then I'll just uh, have to broach it out uh, almost a quarter of a millimeter and we'll do it that way okay so here's 3.47 chamfer. There's our bushing. Leaves a nice uh, nice bit of meat left on the edge of the just broach that out until this fits and we'll be okay. Okay, so we got quite a bit we gotta broach out of this one. Oh, just perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to test these. And shake, and shake, and shake. Okay. So, they mesh as well. Good. Perfect fit. Okay. All we have to do is one more on the front, and we're done with the bushing. And we can put this all back together tomorrow. Okay, we've got all eight bushings done. And that's going to run beautifully. More extreme flopping around with gears. Should run super now. So we'll finish clean. I think what I'm going to do is use some chemical bluing on all these metal parts. I don't know what the heck somebody must have done in the past, but all the bluing is off of it. And the levers and things look kind of shabby, so tomorrow I'll do a little bluing on them. Get them all cleaned up. Then we can get this whole thing put back together and do some test running. Gonna clean this a little bit with alcohol.
So, super glue. Maybe. Okay. Put some new finish on it. Also gives a rust proofing. Hello. Okay. Uh. And we'll have to rinse and dry it again. But we just have some idea what it does. So that, instead of looking like this, it looks like this. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing with this now. Alcohol swab. Grease off.
Okay, that looks better. I'll come back to this one. Okay, we've got the two gear trains back in, and now it's time to oil the front so we can start putting the levers back on. Okay. A long one. Over. And a short one. Okay. All right, because I don't have the bellows in the case to hook up, this star wheel may need to be adjusted, and there's going to have to be some bending going on with the, the lifts for the bellows. Um, I can drop this down. We're going to strike one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I can kind of simulate where these bellow lifts should be, but I can't tell for sure. Cuckoo. 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 Coco, Coco. Might need to be tiny adjustment to that. That's done with the screw, and then turning this lift wheel, star wheel. Well, we about got everything back together. I put in the post to hold the uh, pendulum leader. That's the last piece to go in. Okay, that's it. 
There it is. All put back together. It's interesting. I've never seen this mechanism before. That's an interesting mechanism, but it's uh, controlled by this lift and this lift. And uh, it goes into strike. This lift comes up, lifts this, disengages this. In the meantime, this is holding the fan from running. When it's through cuckooing, then this drops back into its place. And when it does, then the fan can run. And the music box runs and the dancers run. So it's a <clears throat> an interesting little mechanism, but here we are. Yeah. Now all i got to do is uh, put the suspension back on. And then what I can do is hook this up. Let it run. And uh, see that everything's working okay. Okay, nothing loose there. Close that up. Okay. Get some chains put on it. Uh, see if it runs. If it runs, send it back. Okay, we're test running it. See how she goes. The little thing has worked just superbly. Let's trip the hour. Music box running. Dancers platform. Everything is running fine. We'll send it back on Monday. Tomorrow. <laughs>